The Puppy Turtle has asked eight questions for which I'd like to provide my answers. So let's get started. But here's my question. Why should I behave in a way that maximizes happiness and fairness? Why should I attempt to leave the planet in as good a condition as I found it in? Why should I? Now, I, I have, can think of emotional reasons I have not to murder that don't involve God. I personally don't want to go kill somebody. No, I, it just doesn't sound like a fun thing for me to do. But that is not universal among humans. So here is my question. Why should I follow your moral system? Presumably, it would be beneficial to act morally for yourself, for other people you care about, and for people on whom your existence depends. You know, a society depends upon cooperation between other people, and if you behave in a certain way, enough people aren't going to like it, that your existence may be made fairly difficult. Uh, but if you're looking for some kind of universal reason to be obligated to act in a specific sort of way, you're not going to find it. There's a resistance move enough to try to create a government that will be identical in every way, save for the fact that it will not kill Christians. Freedom of religion will be restored. My question is, would you join that resistance? Uh, would you be willing to fight the battle and possibly die for someone else's right to disagree with you. Considering that many other people have fought and continue to fight for my ability to be who I am without being discriminated against or persecuted, yeah, I, I hope that I would be able to do the same for people to have the right to disagree with me. Question three. Why do you care if people believe in God? I care about others' belief in God only to the extent they attempt to dictate how other people are supposed to think and use purely religious ideological reasons to dictate how others are supposed to live. Other than that, I don't care if you believe that Zeus is real. Let's say you find an orb. We'll call it Puppy Turtle's Hypothetical Orb. This hypothetical orb contains somehow, or it is somehow, by some mechanism, irrefutable evidence for God's existence, for the existence of the Christian God, and for the, and just, and for the resurrection of Jesus. It absolutely, positively proves that those things are correct. Now, you have two options, two things you can do with Puppy's hypothetical sphere. You can bring it back to camp, shoot your video camera at it, upload that to YouTube when you get back home, and everyone who sees it will be convinced because it is an actual piece of empirical evidence for God. Or, you could sneak up the volcano at night, toss the sphere in, and no one will ever know. Which do you do? If I had demonstrable evidence for the existence of the Christian God and for the resurrection of Jesus, I would not destroy the evidence. If I have that kind of evidence for something, I'm going to accept it, even if I may not necessarily like the consequences. What if you found an irrefutable argument against evolution, specifically? Now, I am not a creationist, but I still want to ask this question to anybody who uh, accepts evolution, but particularly the atheists or others like me, even other theistic evolutionists like me, uh, who uh, spend a lot of time defending it. If you found an irrefutable piece of evidence, uh, let's say my other hypothetical sphere, or uh, let's say a crocodile, because, because a crocodile would totally destroy evolution, uh, do you take the little crocoduck, uh, let's say it doesn't have nerve endings, and it has an eternal soul, so it won't really care if you kill it, and it's the last of its species, do you show it to the world, or do you just throw it in the volcano and let no one ever know? 
Of course I'd show it to the world. I'd get a Nobel Prize. Also, falsifying evolution does not prove the existence of any god. So, the only thing that it would demonstrate is the way that we've thought things worked up to this point needs to be reworked. What if one day your eldest son or eldest daughter, if you don't have any sons, uh, came home and told you that he had been convinced that Christianity was true and had become a Christian. Would this affect your relationship with your child at all? My child choosing to believe in Christianity would not affect my love or support for them. This would just be something about which we would have to agree to disagree. Although I would be willing to talk about it if they so choose. Other than that, it would be something which would not need to be brought up. The, the universe will eventually die a heat death. Eventually every single piece of help you've provided to anybody will have been futile. How do you go on knowing that everything you've ever done will eventually amount to absolutely freaking nothing? Up to this point, I've preferred existing to not existing. I mean, even like, I did a video, I've taken it down now because, uh, I've realized I, as a Christian, shouldn't be fantasizing about a world in which Christianity isn't true, but in which I said that certain things would motivate me without God, but I've since reasoned it a little more effectively, and if that, if there was no God, and if that, hap if those were the things motivating me, they would be fiction. There being my purpose would be a fiction I was just making up in my own brain. Isn't that the case with any such subjective purpose? I mean, it's obviously the case. You can never have an objective purpose uh, without God. Even uh, breeding is still ultimately a subjective purpose because of the Izot gap. But if you have a subjective purpose, just think to yourself, aren't you making it up? Yes. We are making up any reason for us to exist. And guess what? You are too. Yes, you are. Right now. Now, why do you think that you shouldn't be thinking about a world in which Christianity isn't true? Why is that supposedly off limits? That I would be interested in finding out. And if you have any other questions for me specifically, please contact me, send a video response, leave some comments. I'd enjoy talking with you.